Right, hello everybody, my name is Zero, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Now, I said to myself when I made this channel that I wasn't going to turn it into a React channel. And I'm still not planning on doing that, but I found this really cool YouTube channel called Alternative History Hub. And they've got some interesting theories and some interesting videos. I saw this one and I thought, you know what, I'm going to react to this. Because I'm a history buff, I love my history, absolutely love my history. So I thought, you know what, screw it, I'm going to watch this one. I'm going to do a little bit of reacting to it. If you like this format, or you don't like it, please let me know down below. So, oh, I'm gonna, if I actually put my finger in the camera, that'd be good. Comment down below, and I may or may not do more, depending. We'll see, but anyway, this one. What if Germany had invaded Britain? So this is obviously going to be going into Operation Sea Line, which was uh, the German Reich's plan to invade Britain. Which, by all accounts in <laughs> our timeline, wouldn't have worked at all, ever. So, we'll see. Let's go. In 1940, after France fell, it seemed like a real possibility as the bombs rained down on Britain that the UK was going to face the German army rolling onto their shores mm -hmm. and conquering the island. A that was the plan. A scale invasion of Britain. Now, Wargaming came to me in this sponsor, saying how in the new World of Tanks War Stories Operation go. Sea Lion, that invasion became a reality. The Nazis in World War II don't just stay on the mainland, but invade the United Kingdom. Well, we all know that didn't happen. The UK persevered, very much to Hitler's dismay. And so if you hear any shouting in the background, the British some kids out the back of, my, sailing back of the, the channel house. And taking out the Nazis. What would have been the plan to invade the UK was called Operation Sea Lion. Yeah, it's Operation such a popular Seamline. concept in alternate history, it surprises me why I didn't cover it sooner. So let's imagine what if... I think Man in the High Castle timeline, was based on that, wasn't the it? The Nazis had followed through with Operation Sea Lion. They invade Britain. First thing I want to answer is, what would be the objective of the invasion itself? This seems pretty weird to say, considering yeah. we're talking about Nazi Germany. Invasion for the sake of invasion would be a simple enough reason. Hitler adding to territory for the Reich. Like a risk game. But in Britain's case, this was never the situation. Invading Britain was the absolute last thing the Nazis wanted to do. Hitler wanted the British to simply surrender once... Yeah, Operation Sea Line was actually cancelled quite quickly after it was drawn up. Um, none of the German high command at the time actually wanted to go through with it. Because, you know, obviously when they were planning logistics and potential casualties and things like that one of the things they noticed straight away was how did we get through the Royal Navy the Royal Navy was at the time was still one of the strongest fleets in the world and yeah you may think well it's only a small it's only a small channel you know it's only a small body of water but you have to remember that the Royal Navy was watching it like a hawk watching the entire Royal Navy was watching it like a hawk they they were ready if Germany ever invaded and the chances of Germany actually getting through the Royal Navy were pretty slim. Um, well, the chances are probably very slim to none, actually. Which is why Operation Sea Line in our timeline was actually called off. Let's keep going. France fell so he could focus on the main event, the invasion of Russia. If the British morale was so low... Yeah, he was, he was far more... Hitler himself was far more interested in Russia than Britain. Um, it's actually quite funny thinking about it, that... Um, Hitler was, well, not just Hitler, Germans in general were actually quite respectful to the Britons. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, it's actually quite relatively unknown. Um, the group of islands that actually exist in the channel, uh, what's the name of them? I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But Germans did actually land on those islands and took control. And the stories of what the Germans were like when they were on the islands was interesting. Like they would, the Germans would take off their jackboots before going into somebody's house. Um, they would sit down and have tea with the residents of the island. They would just sit there and just 
chill, basically. And there's even stories of the local Brits actually marrying the German soldiers. Because they were, they got they had that much respect for each other that they actually just married. It was just, oh, kind of like you. Weird, isn't it? Oh, then maybe they'd... Google it. I'm not, I'm not lying or anything like that. Google it. I can't remember the names of the islands, though. I, I suspect one of them's Guernsey, but I could be wrong. But yeah, check it up. It's interesting. Ask for peace, hence the bombings. But then Winston Churchill defiantly showed this was not the case. He will never surrender. realized the UK wasn't yeah. going to simply let this go. Operation Sea Lion wasn't an invasion of conquest, but of desperation, if anything. Nobody in yeah, the German Army Command, even Hitler himself, had confidence in the plan. Yeah. But why? Britannia and the ruling the seas part. Even yeah, though exactly. Germany had the Blitzkrieg on their side, they never came close to the naval capabilities of the British. That channel absolutely terrified the Germans. The idea of having to cross it and land troops on the island was just an absolute logistical nightmare. Most people, especially in the Navy, doubted the Reich even had the ships to pull it off. Even for the Navy powers of no. Britain and America, D-Day was a practical miracle that the amphibious landing was even achieved. And that included four years of naval combat experience and added superiority on the sea. Jesus. The Germans didn't have the... Yeah, um, the Kriegsmarine, which was the German German's equivalent of the Royal Navy, they were strong, but they were nowhere near the actual military capacity that the Royal Navy had. And that channel was scary. For, that channel was scary for both sides. It was scary for Germany because obviously the Royal Navy were watching it. You know, the strongest fleet in the world, but well, one of. You have to remember that the Americans technically had a strong fleet. Just obviously they weren't anywhere in Europe. They were too busy in the Pacific Ocean. And what he said there, you know, the amphibious landings from the Brits, the Canadians, and the Americans onto the beaches of Normandy was also terrifying because the German coastal defences were massive, absolutely massive. It was essentially like the English Channel had become basically just a barrier that nobody could cross. Scary, very scary. The naval experience or the navy numbers to even put a dent in His Majesty's Navy. And they knew if they attempted to invade, their forces would be decimated by the yep. British before even reaching the shore. So Absolutely. although nobody was confident in the plan, Hitler laid out four requirements they'd need to meet before moving on to such an invasion. No, the, I'll include this? those in the scenario. In this alternate timeline, okay. let's go easy on the Germans and say all the requirements Hitler had are met for them to go forward with the invasion. The Germans win the Battle of Britain. The Royal Air Force is decimated. Sometime in September, the Royal Navy is distracted off the coast of Norway and Italy, giving them enough time to clear the few British ships or mines from the channel. Any okay, that enter yeah. are simply destroyed by German artillery. The next phase goes to the right. Kriegsmarine, the German Navy. Now the Kriegsmarine are down on their luck. They barely had the capabilities to really do much at all. <laughs> And because they were so small, I'm liking the music behind this. Ship, it hurt them far more than if the British lost theirs. The Navy yeah, would no, need to ship troops with... across the channel. This brings on images of the Allies on D-Day with these landers. But for the Germans, they only had two prototypes for a similar ship in 1940. So if you were okay, that I didn't know. I thought Germany was a bit more advanced than that when it came to landing craft. But then again, why would they need to? All the battles, all the major wars that they were fighting were on land. No, I never knew, I never knew that. I never knew they didn't actually have an amphibious landing craft, but I suppose at the same time it does sort of make sense. If you were a German soldier in the invasion, you'd be placed in a modified riverboat. If you were lucky, yours would actually control itself. But most had to be towed. If you were lucky, it would control itself. That's a quite terrifying concept. I don't think I'd get in a boat that you couldn't control. Wow, okay. By tugboats. 
You'd be a part of a 67,000 men invasion force shipping from northern France to southern England in the cover of night. The objective is to secure the 67, beachhead, set up That's artillery not enough. along the English coast, and use it to sink any ships entering the channel. Then when all that was achieved, the Germans would encircle London, trap it, and then force a surrender. The farthest north that Germany would go is just a little bit south of Cambridge. Because, once again, the Germans hoped that the British would just surrender. And as is tradition, what if they didn't, you ask? Well, what it seems like would have happened is the Germans would have just been stuck on an island, isolated from mainland Europe, where any help or supplies is just sunk by a nation with a far superior navy and air force. So, you say, that really seems like Nazi Germany is in a... Okay, I'm not so sure on the Air Force thing, because... Yeah, obviously, as a Brit, you know, obviously I'm going to be a fan of the Royal Navy and things like that, but... You have to remember, when they were doing the bombings, original targets for German bombers were actually the RAF bases. Um, there's still a strong theory going around that if Hitler had continued to let the Luftwaffe officers, you know, let us bomb strategic targets like RAF bases, chances are the RAF would have not been wiped out, but definitely would have been a lot less capable than they were. The only reason that changed is because the Brits did one small bombing run over Berlin. It pissed Hitler off. Hitler immediately ordered them to bomb cities instead. Just let the RAF cover. I think... Hmm. Everything so far, I agree with. You know, they would have only gotten as north as Cambridge. That's quite... That's quite funny to think about. Cambridge is not, not very far north at all from the south. That is... Not a long way at all. You have to remember that Great Britain in general is quite relatively hilly as well. Which wouldn't have done the German armor any good. Bit of a huge mess. In fact, instead of Operation Sea Lion being the final death of the Allies like it often is perceived as in the media, it seems more like it would have been a bungled mess due to the limitations of the German Navy and the superiority of Britain's. And for the first time, Jimmy, you would be right. In an alternate timeline where yeah, Nazi control the seas. invaded Britain, even if they did encircle London, I believe the British simply would have moved up the border and used their naval and air superiority to destroy the German supply lines. Essentially yeah, just stranding 60,000 Germans on an island <laughs> with no escape. A reverse Dunkirk. That's not even including the Americans. Who reverse Dunkirk, yeah, that's, that's quite true, anyway. actually. The reason why Operation Sea Lion was scrapped was because even Hitler, the same guy that thought invading Russia was a good idea, had the foresight to see how much Germany would lose to Britain. If the Germans went through with- The guy that thought that invading Russia in the winter, oh, trying to invade Russia in the winter thought was a good idea. Even that he thought that invading Britain was a bad idea. Shows how much they hated the idea of invading Britain. With it, it probably would have been a drawn-out failure. Southern England still would have seen a catastrophic loss of life, far more than in our timeline. With supply lines cut, it's likely the Germans resort to looting and pillaging, but eventually they'd surrender. And this surrender would prove Churchill's words that Britain would continue to fight, and prove Germany wasn't as invincible as everybody thought. This might To be fair, yeah, all that would do would probably just... Yeah, it probably just increases the Brit Brits' resolve at that point. Probably push them to fight harder. Hmm, interesting thought. Even potentially push back German plans to invade the Soviet Union, force them to reevaluate. But that's more speculative, though. What do you think would have happened? So, even though in my scenario I predicted Germany would lose, it doesn't mean there wouldn't be a battle or two. And as a massive fan of World of Tanks, I'm glad they introduced War Stories. This video was inspired by War Stories Operation Sea Lion, an alternate history campaign where... Okay, we'll stop it there. So I think the last bits are only going to be an advert anyway. Yeah, it's only going to be an advert anyway. That's fine. Yeah, interesting. Basically, on no account of any alternate history would Germany succeed in invading Britain? And I can fully understand that. 
like I said, even German, like he said, German High Commander was so against the idea of invading Britain that if they actually went through that, they'd just be destroyed. They'd be ruined. Which is the whole reason why they didn't want to invade in the first place. So if they did do the invasion, they'd just get themselves in an even hotter mess. Did he say he said something about slowing down the Soviet invasion, like the German invasion of Soviets? I can see that because the amount of manpower they'd lose trying to invade Britain would be quite large. I'm bearing in mind Germany was having manpower issues pretty early on in the war. Yeah, I can see that going wrong. Maybe it would have caused the invasion of Russia to take a lot longer. Maybe it wouldn't have broken the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Interesting things to think about. Hmm, okay. Well, I think I'll do it for this one. Like I say, if you like this format, if you want me to do some more history videos like this, comment down below, give it a like. And that'll be it for today. I've been Zero. This has been Reacting to Alternate History Hub. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.